Welcome back to the channel, everyone. We're back with another episode of Q episode 8. Uh, last time on Q, our team was successful in defeating um, Sejo, who, again, as I mentioned in the last episode, I'm a bit underwhelmed by because Sejo being the top four school in the prefecture, having lost to Karasuno, who, while I did want to win at the same time, um, they weren't playing great in the first set with Hinata's mistakes and they don't have an ace, they don't have a liberal. Um, how do you lose being one of the top four schools? And it became pretty evident that, okay, well, there's only one person carrying the team and it's Okawa, and if he's not there, then the team can't carry themselves. So um, a bit a bit torn with Seijo. And, you know, having seen the team's personality and their dynamic, their synergy, I do like the team. You know, I like how laid back they are. And, um, they're not taking everything too seriously. Um, they have a lot of fun with each other and the game itself. Just watching um, Okawa's dynamic with one of the other guys on the team. I don't know what he, I forget his name. I think maybe he's their ace, but um, it was just funny and, and, and cracked me up a bit. So I like the team's dynamic, but it's clear that the team themselves are not very good. And I don't think it's ever a great good thing when only one person on the team is actually nice enough to to perform well all right one person this is a team sport one person cannot carry the team the same is said for Carcino, and the same applies i think to sejo um he i mean okawa came in and he, he nearly he impressed me of course he did um his serves are wicked and we didn't even get to see him actually set and considering how highly kagiyama speaks of him we can only assume that he's pretty damn good right um but I, at the same time, the the team, the, the rest, of, the other members of the team, the rest of the team, they don't seem to be all that good. So um, so I'm I'm, I'm a bit torn with Sejo. Maybe um, we'll see them again in the future, and um, and they'll change my mind a bit in terms of the other players. I like Okawa. Um, as much as they describe him as being similar to Suki, you know, um, in terms of you know how he tries to play up the other teams and get on their nerves and, and you know annoy them and, and stuff like that. But um, even though he comes across like that a bit, he does talk honestly, right? He he said it to Daichi and the audience as well that um, offensively, you guys are good, but your serves are not that great. So you need to work on that because I'm not the only third out there. So um, I like that. He, he's direct. I like that. Um, so he gets on your nerves, yes, but he's being honest. He's being blunt. And... He even said to his own teammate that okay, um, I'm good in terms of um my serves, my receives, and my spikes, but Kagama is definitely going to be better than I am where where um where um giving tosses are concerned. So he's honest with himself, he's honest with his teammates, he's honest with his opponents. You know, people might find that a bit irritating um at times, but and maybe it's how he does it. You know, um in a condescending way, it's like um. I'm better than you, so you need to work on these areas. I can see where it might get, it might irritate persons when he comes, how he brings it across. Um, but at the same time, he's speaking truth, and Daishi did, did admit that, okay, we are missing some me some members to kind of lay our foundation here, and we're missing our Libra, we're missing our Ace. Um, and if they work on that, I think they, if they've already beaten Sejo without that, I think they'd be a pretty good team if they fill those, um, those positions. Um, so we met our Libro at the end, or at least I'm assuming that's him. Um, so um, I guess we're, we're, we're going to work on maybe getting the ace or determine how Hinata... I, again, as I said, I don't see why Hinata can't be the ace. Um, if, you come, if you're comparing the match with Sejo that we just saw, he did a much better job with their ace. I don't know if their ace was playing, but whoever it is, their spikers were. He was doing a decent job. Um, so they have Tanaka and they have Hinata. I don't see why one of the two can't be their, their ace, right? Even if it's not Hinata, Tanaka. Um, but um, we'll see. Episode 8. Let's check it out. Received it perfectly. The Guardian Daisy. Yeah, he's shorter than Hinata. <laughs> I mean, you don't like when people say it about you. Don't do it. Finally. <laughs> it's their tears of joy, man. 
Oh yeah. Alright, so second year. So he's played against Kageyama before. So he's got, he must be really good. Came from a power school as well. <laughs> What better reason could there be, man? I, 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 I'm with him. All the wrong reason, but also right. Okay. He's got serious here quickly. Some history going on there that we don't know about. Yeah, he is a very short player. But at the same time, in terms of defense, the ball can't get to the setter if he doesn't receive the ball. He did see he received the ball. <laughs> yeah, he's like a short version of Tanaka. Doesn't like compliments. <laughs> what did Daichi say? Call him Senpai. <laughs> I'm in. Even buying him ice cream. Seems right. Hinata has this word way of, you know, sort of manipulating others. Not, not even manipulating because he's not aware that he's doing it. But influencing others to do what the team needs. He did it with Kageyama and he's not doing it with, um, with Nishinoya. Nishinoya. <laughs> さっき言ってたアサヒさんって誰ですかバカ不良いねその名を出すなうんがらせ I like Nishinoya. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> yeah, when someone actually saves the ball, that's when everyone goes wild. It's weird because, I mean, with Hinata's flexibility and speed, he'd actually be a pretty good liberal if he wanted to go that route. But wants to be ace. Yeah, decoy doesn't sound even less cool. He's right, but Nico still sounds late. <laughs> yeah, he's right. Oh, the shopkeeper. Why him though? Ah. He's Coach Yukai's grandson. Makes sense. Or is it because of the name or because he's actually good though? Yeah. Yeah, but I feel for the, the guys who are in their third year though. Um, I mean, Daichi and Sugawara. And he seems awfully young. Why not? Coach Yukai's son, or if he has a son. He looks really young though, like he could be in college or something. For, for that for him to be their coach. Asahi. 
I was saying before that the coach looks really young. He looks really old. Well, Nishinoya said he won't come back unless he comes back, so they definitely need him to, to come back. Oh, he's big. あなたのプラクティスマッチ。おお、1年か。シュッ。おお、身長は月島の方が高い。けど、なんつうかでっかい。いや、月島 why is he being so difficult though? Why did he leave? Asaki wa Karasno de Ichiban de Kagatashi, Power Mote. Dakaramina, I so ace that to meet him at the Shinraiste. Demo Arashia de Asahi no spike or Tete taking a tomeratesa. It's all of them. So, I mean, Tanaka would have been on their team as well, though, right? So, I mean, you wouldn't, why would he be shouldering all of that himself? But I guess the job of the ace is technically to get through. And if he couldn't, I can see why he's hesitant now. Did the coach say yes? So that's the only thing I can see getting him this exciting. Training camp. How much time has passed? This is gonna be they just started. He now to just start high school. Already a training camp. You've heard Kagiyama's on your team now? Please tell me that's not it. Ah, because his grandpa used to battle this rival school, so if he hears they're playing against them, then you want to reconsider. Uh, what do you know? Sukishima actually has a sense of humor. So why not just do it, man? Okay, I get that. How many persons are going to be on the court, though? How many persons are allowed to are on a team? I mean, if they add Asahi and uh, Nishinoya, Tanaka. Oh. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> Landing. Yeah, but there, there's gonna be inter, you know, inner inner team conflict. Oh. For the what everyone else says about him. I mean, Hinata more than even Kagama would probably understand because he's a spiker. Uh, I feel badly about that comment though because it's like saying that Sugawara wasn't enough to get him those sets to get past the blockers. So I feel like we're, we'd be trading one for the other. I mean, Nishinoya is saying that, you know, he would feel... It would feel bad if they won a match without Asahi being a part of the team. But by going forward with this current lineup, you're going to be doing that without um, without Sugawara. So you're losing someone either way, I feel. Oh, it's coming from the king. The Tyrant King. He's growing. 
Come on. You know you want to go and watch. Yes. Can jump. See, it's not that he doesn't want to play anymore. All right, there we have it, episode eight, and uh, I mean, there was no match that episode, but there's still somehow a lot to unpack. And first, let me just say, um, I mean, for Hinata specifically, I, I know I've said it a few times, but I'm going to say it again, nonetheless. I mean, Hinata is he has that that weird mindless innocence you know um that he's not aware of but others somehow are and or it's it's somehow so potent that it manages it, it influences others without them acknowledging or recognizing it and we've seen it since his interaction with kagiyama and we see it with nishinoya and we're seeing it with asahi here in this episode as well and there are three players that he is um unbeknownst to him to himself you know he's influenced them in some way um in the direction that he needs them to go or the team actually needs them to go it's 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 i've seen a few other reactions um you know in terms of their their thought first thoughts of the, the episodes up to now but um the persons keep referring to and, and i mean that's the name that i gave kagama you know the, the king but I made a, a reference a few episodes ago about you know about black sales and different um, leadership approaches um, that we that that are demonstrated in that series and comparing it to this one as well. Um, even though they're very different, but you know, um, Hagia, um, Hinata himself is that charismatic king um, that you don't know. You know, he's not flashy and he's not you know. But somehow he manages to influence his, you know, his men around him, his teammates around him, to follow him, right? And I think that's the word I'm looking for. He he's managed to influence others to follow him, right? Um, Kagiyama has found himself adjusting to his plays, adjusting how he plays because of Hinata. Um, we see Nishinoya. Um, Nishinoya is sticking around again because you know because of Hinata and Hinata's willingness to learn and um how he views because one of the first thing you should ask him you know you assume that i'm the liberal because i'm short right and he said no because the liberal is the best receiver that's how i know and it's like he that that, that alone that comment alone was enough to, for, to earn missionary's respect in some respect in, in some way or form you know and and he decided to stick around and now he's going to go to the training camp with them and here we see the same thing happening with Asahi as well. It's like, okay, um, Nishinoya couldn't get through to him because the only person who can actually get through to him is someone who has seen from the same heights that he has and knows what it's like to be a spiker. Um, I mean, um, Tanaka may have been able to, to you know, give him the same advice, but not in the same way because Tanaka is a bit more direct and forceful. But in the way that Hinata brought it across, um, that's what Asahi needed to hear. Uh, he's not back on completely yet, but he's at least, you know, reminded of what he's missing and he's peeking in on their little practice match here. So um, it's just very, really interesting that um, that Hinata is, my, in my mind, my, from my perspective, he has managed to accomplish so much in so little time. You know, and I just don't think the character gets enough, um, he doesn't get enough credit. So uh, although going through the episode so far, Kagiyama has been called the king or the tyrant king. In some respects, Hinata is the king, um, but from the other side of the spectrum, he relies more on charisma to get to get things done. Um, so very interesting dynamic between the two. Um, uh, of course, we now have um, a practice match coming up and I will admit, um, I mean, I like the pacing of the, the show so far, all right? Um, we seem to be jumping from match to match. Um, we have moments like this this episode where it's more dialogue and dialogue heavy, which has to be a part of it um, for the characters and their development and introducing new characters, um, which I appreciate. So um, we have a new, uh, another practice match coming up with um, Neko something something um, that they've said 
has a history with Chris, you know, their two coaches were rivals. Um, and they're hoping that this will convince um, the younger Ukai to actually agree to be their coach. Um, as, I, as I said before, I think he looks a bit young to be the coach, though. Um, it looks like he's in college or just left college or something, but it doesn't look like he has a whole lot of experience in actual coaching. Um, so it's why, I mean, is it the name that, the, I mean, the, the guy did admit that, okay, it's part of the name. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that he has something more to bring uh, than just that. I'm, I'm going to assume that maybe even though he doesn't have the coaching experience, that he has actually played volleyball himself with his grandpa being so legendary. I, I, I believe that if you're asking him, he probably has played himself and been taught by Coach Yukai or, or the grandpa Yukai. So, um, so he has that experience that he can actually bring to the team. Um, so, I mean, it's going to be an interesting match. Interesting match. Um, I'm definitely enjoying uh, Mishinoya so far. I mean, his explanation for, as for why he chose to come to Karasuno. Um, I mean, black, as I said, black is my favorite color. And girls in their nice uniforms who, you know, he likes. I, I can res- I respect Mishinoya. I respect Mishinoya. And, um, I mean, apparently he's from a, a, a powerhouse school as well. So both he and Kageyama are coming from similar backgrounds. Um, and it kind of highlighted the differences here in terms of, you know, the the spiker versus the setter versus the receiver in terms of um, the spiker and the setter gets more um, attention because, you know, in the middle of a match, especially I mean, you look at different sports, like even basketball or football. In football, it's typically the, you know, the, the forwards, the striker that actually gets the most attention. Or in basketball, it's the same thing. It's the person who's doing the scoring that you you're often focusing more on, but not necessarily the ones who are doing the assist or or defense or the goalkeeper, whatever the case might be. Those persons, even though they lay the foundation, tend to be you know an afterthought in a lot of sports. Uh, I mean, in something like tennis, where where it's one on one, you know, you have the focus is just on those two players. But in a team sport, the defensive players often than not are an afterthought, and. I like the way Nishinoya put it here because, um, I mean, if um, if the the liberal isn't there to actually receive the ball and send it back to the setter, the setter isn't in a position to be highlighted in the first place, and then he isn't in a position to give the ball to the ace to be highlighted in the first place. So, um, on the defensive line, the liberal is 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 very important. It's very very important. Uh, because he stops the ball from touching the court, he stops the, the he keeps the game going, you know. Um, so I'm glad to see that this character is you know considered a genius as well, and um, they they now have two geniuses on their team. So um, I'd be interested to see to see how because they haven't even though they have these great players on their team, they don't have the synergy yet because none of them have practiced together. Um, and with Asahi coming back in, what will that mean for for Hinata? You know, um, is he going to be stuck being a decoy though? Um, I mean, we, we keep calling him decoy, but his position is middle blocker, right? And and, and from the explanation, the middle blocker still does puts and stuff like that, but uh, and and is a decoy. But I don't know that Hinata's great at blocking so far. You know, um, his height definitely still puts him at a disadvantage there. Um, I think I, I don't know. I, I think an ace. They said an ace by themselves should be able to stand up to at least three blockers. I think is what Sugawara said. Um, and I guess at the moment Hinata is not capable of doing that. I don't think he has the power. Um, I don't think he has the maneuverability. He still can't do the, shoot the quick without his eyes being closed so he's not there yet but i'm hoping that he'll get there eventually i don't know if he'll have the kind of power that um asahi might have because he's a he's a huge burly dude and i don't think hinata has that physical capability but he may be able to use his speed to get around blocks because he can dash around the court quite easily more so than um, than the other players so he has that going for him um interesting enough though i w- was considering, um, you know, Hinata being a liberal because, I mean, Nishinoya is shorter than he is. Um, but at the same time, Nishinoya doesn't have Hinata's... Well, I, I imagine Nishinoya has amazing reflexes, right? 
Um, but I'm not sure compared to Hinata. I think Hinata might have better reflexes and and stamina. You know, um, so it'd be interesting. I, I'm just it, it's just a matter of when they actually said it. I not immediately pictured Hinata as a libero. Um, they'd be they'd be pretty good defensively. His receives are awful though, so it's not going to happen. But um, if he could, you know, with his reflexes and his physique and his speed, he he'd be he'd be fantastic. You know, um, but it's it's good that you have different characters. You know, dominating different parts of the court, um, different even though he's he's short, um, but that doesn't make him any less valuable. In fact, it makes he's one of the most valuable valuable persons on the actual team. So, um, I'd love to see that dynamic. So, um, can't wait for the next um next episode. I don't know if we're going to be hit, going directly into the match with Nekoma, um, but I can't wait to see that match up. All right, guys, be sure to post down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on this episode. Be sure to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys for the next one.